Say good morning, friends. Hi, it's Sunday morning. Brother Mike, back on the uh, Sunday morning podcast. Got another good one for you today. Sure, thank you for tuning in. A couple of quick announcements. Please remember that we have uh, at the Arizona Deliverance Center two live services every week, Thursday and Friday evenings at 7 o'clock. Uh, those services are broadcast on our YouTube teaching channel. Go to youtube.com slash house of healing az. And uh, we also have three Zoom services per week, Mondays at 630 for the ladies. And then we've got uh, Wednesday and Saturday for everybody. That's at 6, 6 p.m. Arizona and Pacific time. Hope you'll join. And uh, please remember our women's um, seminar coming up this month. It's going to be uh, remarkable, to say the least. These women's seminars are the bomb. It's on the 19th. I hope you can make it. A lot of people are flying in from out of state to go to the seminar. Our healing house is uh, full. We don't have any beds left for that seminar, so... You'll have to get a hotel if you come in from out of state. And we hope you're able to make it. It's going to be really great. And uh, if you turn with me in your Bibles real quickly, Luke chapter 17. This story is like uh, off the chain spectacular. What a great story this is. I'll read it to you, starting at verse 11, Luke chapter 17. It is truly remarkable. It says, it came to pass as Jesus went to Jerusalem that he passed through the middle of Samaria and Galilee. Now, remember, Samaria was an area that was off limits to Jews. Why? Because... Uh, Samaritans hated Jews. They were worshipped at Mount Gerson. And the Jews hated the Samaritans because they were half-breeds. 
they were Jewish people who had intermingled with uh, the Gentiles or the other nations. And uh, these two groups did not get along. You know, they uh, did not like each other. In fact, there was some hatred. There was intense hatred between the two groups. And uh, Jesus, as you know, did not have that kind of hate for Samaritans or anybody else. In fact, Jesus had passed through Samaria on other occasions and had ministered to people. And the Jews would not go there. For example, the woman at the well was one trip through Samaria. Uh, but going, going through Samaria from the north to the south to Jerusalem, that was a shorter way to go. It was better to go through Samaria, but Jews went around it and put an extra two days on their trip coming from the north because they wouldn't go through that area. They hated their guts. Hatred's a funny thing, isn't it? It's the world's strongest emotion. Hatred's frightening, actually, because it's the, uh, it lays the foundation for violence and murder and war. And so Jesus went through Samaria and met the woman at the well, John chapter 4. One time Jesus was going to go through Samaria and he was going to stop off and hold a um, Holy Ghost revival. That's in uh, Luke chapter 9. Do you remember that? And uh, when he went in there to help them, the Samaritans came out and said, hey, we hate your guts. Get out of here. And James and John, uh, John in particular, the apostle of love, asked the Lord if he wanted to rain down fire from heaven and fry them, make a giant Samaritan barbecue out of them. And Jesus said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. Amazing. Luke 9, 56. What was he saying there? Well, these, these uh, disciples were once again manifesting demons. And Jesus said, the Son of Man didn't come to destroy men's lives. He came to save them. So now he's going through Samaria again in Luke 17. And it says when he entered a certain area, 10 lepers met him as he was passing through Samaria again with his disciples. And as you know, in Leviticus chapter 13, Numbers chapter 5, uh, lepers in Israel, Second, Second Kings 15 also had it, lepers were not allowed to live with the, the normal population. In fact, they had a social distancing rule in the Old Testament of 300 feet. Lepers could not come near a non-leprous leprous person um, they couldn't get within 300 feet. When I was at Circle K during COVID, I think it was six feet. They had these stickers on the floor. And um, we, we later found out that social distancing was something the CDC just made up. You know, they just cooked it up in their brain. But anyway, they had a 300 feet social distancing there. So these lepers heard about Jesus passing through Samaria. And uh, they stood afar off. They didn't want to come up to him because of that rule in the Bible. And they started yelling at him. And they yelled at him and they said, Jesus, master, epistasis is the Greek word that means commander. They saw Jesus as the commander of sin, sickness, and death. And they cried out to the Lord, and what a spectacular prayer. This thing's flat out awesome. Have mercy on us. I'll tell you what, the Holy Ghost, that gets his attention. When you're looking to Jesus as the author and finisher of your faith, and you're crying out for mercy, he just comes alive. <laughs> he 
It is spectacular, to say the least. Last Friday night at the service, we just had a whole lineup of people being delivered from demons because they were crying out for mercy. Other people sat in the back and didn't do anything. They didn't cry out for mercy, and they, they got nothing. What a show. Mercy, crying out for mercy, always causes the ear of the Lord to move toward you. Jesus looked up, it says in verse 14, he saw them and he said to them, he says to them, go show yourselves to the priests. Okay, that's in Leviticus 14. Go show yourself to the priests. And they immediately obeyed, just like that. Boom. Wow. You can tell these, these weren't born again Christians in the 21st century, right? I mean, if the Lord tells a Christian something now, they got to think about it, analyze it, go over it, cross reference it, and then go to five different churches trying to get a word from somebody. Now, not these guys. The commander told them, go show yourself to the priests. And they just, like that, obeyed. See, Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I tell you. You can be born again Christian, but not be a friend of God. You can have the love of God all over you, but not be his friend. That's very true. Uh, a parent can have deep love for a child, but the child is not the parent's friend. They don't do what they're asked. They disobey. They cause all kinds of problems, yet they are still loved. Born-again Christians are very loved unconditionally by God, but that doesn't mean that you're friends. See? Friendship's a different thing. <clears throat> he said, go to the priests. And uh, it came to pass that as they went, as they went, see that? Mark chapter 11, you know, you like this fig tree? Well, you will not only do what is done to the fig tree, but you'll do greater works than these. How did Jesus curse the fig tree? He did something. Doing something triggers the supernatural power of faith and miracles happen. And he said, uh, as they went, they were what? Cleanse, katharizo is a Greek word. It means exactly the way it was translated. They got cleaned up. They were made clean. And they looked down, and like Naaman, the warrior in the Old Testament, their skin was better than when they were a baby. They had baby soft skin. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Your skin's falling off. You got sores all over you. They're bleeding. Blood's dripping off your body. These scabs uh, flake off and they leave exposed skin under there. Then they get infected. I mean, these people were walking toilets. They were walking toilets. Okay. They were walking latrines. Filthy, like you can't believe. Dirty. And suddenly, miraculously, supernaturally, as soon as they obeyed and started to go to the priest, a few seconds later, they're all healed. They're all cleansed. But it says, verse 15, but one of them, when he saw that he was healed, look at my arms, unbelievable. Turned back and didn't go to the priest anymore. He turns back and then he starts doing something that's not allowed in church. He starts yelling out praises to God. <laughs> yeah, you start yelling praises to God. I'm telling you what, you're going. The ushers are going to come for you. You'll be out in the hall real quick. But all lukewarm, carnal Christian churches are like that. They don't want anybody screaming and yelling praises to God. Or being exceptionally grateful makes the 
It makes the uh, board members and the pastoral staff nervous. And he came with a loud voice that says, and he glorified God. That was number one. Number two, he fell down on his face. He does a Peter Pan, boom. Lands on his face at the feet of Jesus, it says. There's no better place to be than the feet of Jesus. <laughs> wow. After you've yelled out your praises to God, you head for the feet of Jesus. You follow this pattern here? Immediate obedience, gratefulness, thankfulness. Isn't that amazing? You want to know something funny? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul outlines what humanity is going to be like in the latter days at the end of the world. And right now we're, we're, in, we're in the pre-tribulation and we're nearing the end. We've only got a few years left before the rapture hits. This thing's going to be over quickly. And as Paul said to Timothy, in the latter times, men shall be lovers of their own selves. They will be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. They will be unthankful and unholy. Now, you notice something funny there? Unthankfulness is right next to unholiness. Wow. You know what the biggest problem with born-again Christians is? Why they can't get any miracles? Unthankfulness. It's the worst thing. When I do my devotionals in the morning, and this is just me, I'm not telling you to do what I do. Maybe you're doing something better than me. Many of you, I'm sure, are. But in my morning devotionals, I have a, a little book that I start with, and then I go through different things in the book. But in the page one is uh, the grateful list, and I have a lump number down the list, and I go down that list giving God thanks for all the different things he's done for me, my family, the ministry, all of it. It's all on the list there. I go through it every morning. I need to do it more often, too, of course. I'm certainly not perfect. Oh, far from it. But here we go. Unthankfulness is next to unholiness in Paul's horrible list of sin, human sin. Second Timothy chapter 3, he itemizes it. I've done a Bible study on it, and I broke down each one of those words. It's really quite revealing. It's a revelatory section. Unthankfulness is similar to unholiness. It's, 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 it's you relapsing on porn, alcohol, drugs, food, uh, sex, all of it, porn, all the, it's the same, unthankfulness. Make a list of all the stuff God's done for you. And uh, when you get up in the morning, take five minutes, five, that's it, okay? One, two, three, four, five, five minutes, that's all you need to do. And you go down the list there and just make sure that he knows you remember that you're thankful for what he did. Thank you for what he did. I go down my list. I start with my best girl, Tracy, and I hit the thank yous for her. Then I go to all my ex-wives and my current wife. I go down that list, thankfulness. I just go through the whole thing. You make your own list, and I'm sure shoot your list is probably better than mine. That's okay. He fell down on his face. See that? Immediate obedience, whew, they went. Then screaming out your praises to God, meaning it's coming from the depth of your soul. You don't have to yell, yell every time, but it comes out of the soul in desperation. Praising the Lord. Number three. You fall down at the feet 
of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, the commander, as the, as the lepers called him, the commander. And you give thanks while you're on your face. And the point of the story, again, was he was a Samaritan. Again, the Jews hated these people. But God is speaking to us today, and he's telling us, I love people other people hate. I love people who, are, who have been rejected by others. Those are the ones I accept. See, your church may have bagged you. Your friends may have dumped you. Your family may have buried you alive. That's got nothing to do with God. Your Heavenly Father treats you like a Samaritan. Everybody hates Samaritans. No, sorry, not the Lord. Then Jesus answered and he says, while the guy's on the ground there, face down, he says, were there not nine cleansed, Catharizo, made clean, cleaned up, were not, were, were not, wasn't there 10 of them? Clean, where, where are the other nine? Where are they? Verse 17. Verse 18. They are not found that return to give, give glory to God. Now remember, it doesn't say God doesn't love them because they didn't give him thanks. It doesn't say that God's going to give them the leprosy back because they didn't give thanks. The point of that verse is it was noticed. See, I've missed mornings occasionally on my devotions, and I haven't done them. Once in a while, I screw up and miss it or get involved in something else, and I bungle the job. Well, God doesn't hate my guts because I forgot a morning devotion last week or last month. But he does notice it. He does notice it. And he's noticing you. He notices do you remember what I did for you? Are you grateful for what I did for you? See, here's the great thing. Demons are trying to control your mind by putting negative thoughts in there. They can't do that when you're grateful because your mind has shut down the negative thoughts and is now preoccupied with gratefulness. And the demons are frozen. They've lost. They can't do it. A grateful mind can't be overrun by demons. And the demons hate it, by the way. They don't want to hear you do that. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard to them. They're just creeping out while you're giving thanks. And the point of the story was, he said, the only person that came back to give thanks and give glory to God, it says, was a stranger. Translation, people that everybody hates, God accepts, particularly when he hears them yelling out, glory to you, Lord. Thank you for what you did for me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for caring. Thankfulness. That's what Paul told the Philippians, didn't he? In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus our Lord. In everything, give thanks. That means crap that happens to you and blessings that happens to you. If you can learn to thank God for your trials and tribulations, you will become a spiritual monster in Christ. I mean, totally different from all other Christians. Then in verse, verse 19, he drops another bomb on us. Jesus looks at the guy and says, stand up. He said, arise. Anthistomy means to stand up on your feet. Stand up here. 
go your way. Now, you know that guy was a leper and had been for who knows how long. And I mean, that guy couldn't wait to get back to his family. He couldn't get wait to get back to his friends. He couldn't wait to go home. But unlike modern day Christians who are carnal, lukewarm losers, this guy, this guy postponed what he wanted to do and prioritized his praise. I want to go home. I can't wait to see my wife. I want my kids so bad, but I got to do something for the Lord first. Jesus once said, he that loves mother and father, son or daughter, husband or wife, more than me is not worthy of me. Wow. This guy put off his personal life that he craved and that he had lost and it had been restored. See, this healing of leprosy had ramifications that were enormous. All the people that these lepers knew, family and friends, employers, synagogue people, all of them, they had lost. They had lost everything, their jobs, their life, their money, their family, their kids, everything was gone. Well, the other nine couldn't wait to get home, which would be a normal human feeling. Absolutely. There's nothing sinful or wrong about that. That would be a normal desire of a person who had lost everything and then had it restored. Perfectly normal, not a sin, no problem there, but it's the priority of life, putting your kids ahead of God, ouch, putting your career ahead of God, ow, putting your spouse ahead of God, oh no. It's a priority system that most Christians have not learned. Well, this dying leper learned it. And then Jesus said, stand up, now go your way. You can go home to your family now and rejoice. I mean, they had a party that night you wouldn't even believe. And he says to him, your faith has made you whole. Your faith. Did you see that? Oh, I know you didn't miss that. You didn't miss it. Well, that was God's sovereign will. He just came out of a cloud with a bowl to let. No. No. Those ten lepers, none of them would have been healed if they did not do what? Obey. They all obeyed. Instantly triggering a miracle. You are my friends if you do what I tell you. But this leper didn't want to just be cleansed. He wanted to be made completely whole. And here's what it says. Go your way. Your faith, your faith has made you whole. Greek word, check this out, sozo, delivered. Being cleansed of leprosy did not sozo deliver those other nine lepers. But the tenth leper, the only one that came back, he wanted to be delivered. And he went through the deliverance process, giving glorious praise to God, falling down at the feet of Jesus, giving thanks to the Lord, triggered sozo, deliverance. All you got to do is make the adjustment. It's easy to do. Yeah, you just pull out a piece of paper. There you go. Pull out a paper and write down your morning gratefulness items. Itemize them. And then you spend some time telling the Lord. Lord, here's column one, all the good things you've done for me all the good things that happened to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's column two. 
the crap in my life. I got crap city here, crap city there, puke city there, and puke city here. Thank you. I know you're going to fix this. I know you're going to come through. Column one, thank, thanking God for things that have happened in your past. Column two, thankful for things that are going to happen in your future. Now, you're going to become a very dangerous person spiritually. That's what Mickey said to Rocky. If you can, if you can learn to move with this string on your feet, he said, hey, Rocky Marciano had the same problem, and this string cured it, he said. See, if you learn to move and you learn to punch with inside the confines of your footwork and this string, you become a very dangerous poison. Well, you can become a very dangerous poison to the devil. But you got to become like a dying leper to do it. You can't just assume things. You can't take things for granted. Because remember, in the latter times, you know what's going to happen. Men will become lovers of themselves. They will be unthankful and unholy. Both put on the same level. Unholy. Christians living in sin are unholy. Unthankfulness, same level, right next to each other. Yikes. See, your praise is one thing the devil cannot overcome. He can't, he can't take it. There's nothing to do about it. He turns into a heavy bag in the gym, and all he does is take shots. Boom, boom, boom. I was an amateur boxer off and on for 10 years when I was young. I started in eighth grade. I loved it, and I wanted to be the champion of the world, and I wanted to be famous, and I wanted to have all kinds of girlfriends and all kinds of money. I had all these big dreams in eighth grade. It was all, you know, obviously flushy stuff. Well, I used to work out in the gym every day after I got out of school. I'd head down to the gym and on weekends. I was there like all day, Saturdays and Sundays. And I used to work out on the heavy bag. Boom, 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 boom. You know what? I never lost a fight at the heavy bag. I was like 1,500 and oh. Yeah, well... You know what? The problem there was the heavy bag wasn't punching back. You know, <laughs> I was winning because I had no competition. Well, that's exactly what the devil turns into a, a, a punching bag, a heavy bag in the gym. That's what he becomes when you let your praise go and you crank it from your guts like the dying leper. He came back and he was yelling. Glory to God. He fell on his face. Now, that's some serious praying, friend. Right? Remember that story with praying Hyde? He went to the, went to the church um, that morning to pray, and the, the pastor of the church said, do you mind if I go with you? He said, no, I don't mind. Praying Hyde goes down to the front of the church, kneels down at the altar, never says a word for 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Didn't say one word. After half an hour, he lets out this big sigh. <sighs> right after that, the pastor who was sitting four or five rows behind him on the aisle section of the pew, watching him, kind of sitting there praying himself, he felt someone walk past him going down to hide. He felt a something like an angel or something passing him going down to see Hyde. See, Hyde, Hyde wasn't content just to have a cleansing. That wasn't good enough for Hyde. He wanted in, into the Holy of Holies. He wanted to get into the inner sanctum. How do you do that? Praise Where are the other nine at? Where are you today? Where are you? What are you doing? Where's that list? Thankful for your past blessings. Thankful for your future ones. Crap, 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 crap. Puke, 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 puke. Future victory. 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Friend, you can't lose this way. And that's why this, the Holy Ghost put this story in the Bible. That's why he did it. He said, now here's the roadmap to miracles from God. Here it is. Follow this roadmap. Are you an outcast? Have you been rejected? Did your spouse leave you? Did your ki kids tell you to go suck on something? Did they tell you that? Good. Good. Because you're a Samaritan. Did you know that no Jewish lepers got healed that day? Did you know that? God's chosen people. God's chosen people. Nobody got healed. Don't you see? Faith crosses all boundaries. The centurion was not Jewish. His son got healed. The mother from Syria was not Jewish. Her daughter got delivered. I hope I'm helping somebody today. I'm hoping that you will see yourself as someone prime cut, even though you were tossed in the trash by family, friends, and society and your church. Even you were tossed out. You are still prime cut. You are a Samaritan. Can you imagine that? God called you because you're a Samaritan. <laughs> Man, you're a killer now. Your mediocre Christian life dies on my podcast today. It's dead. We're going to commit suicide. I am no longer a carnal useless, lukewarm, mediocre, common Christian. No. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to go my way just like that dying leper. Were there not ten lepers healed? Where's the other nine? God's asking you the same question today. Where are you? I mean, how many more years are you going to waste? Well, Brother Mike, I've wasted 30 or 40 now. I, I don't know. It's just not. I, no. Yes, I do know. You wasted 40 years. You screwed up. Drop it and move forward. Why waste the rest of your life and on your dead deathbed die with a titanic load of grief, uh, regrets? Why do that? Well, why do it? You shouldn't be doing it. Don't do it. God doesn't want you to do it. Did you waste 40 years? Okay. Yeah, I did too. I wasted 40 years. Listen, God's got something great for you. And he wants you to act like the one leper that came back. The other nine got healed because they obeyed. The 10th leper got healed because he obeyed. But he wanted to be delivered. So, so. And that's the same way with you. You don't want to just be healed, do you? If you do, uh, you know, I hope you're healed and God bless you. But let me talk to the other people who are, are not like the nine. I want the person on the podcast today who's like the one. The one came back to be delivered, not just cleansed. I don't want to just be cleansed. I want to be delivered. The great warrior Naaman from Syria, what happened to him? He dipped in the river, he came out, he was healed. Did he go home ungrateful? No. He went back to the prophet of God. Wanted to give him all kinds of gifts. Not why, because he bribed him? No. He was grateful for what Jehovah, the Hebrew God, had done for him. He was thankful. Because none of the Syrian gods could have ever done that. He knew he was in another league to say the least. And the great prophet of God would not accept any gifts because all the miracles of God and the blessings of God are all free 
paid, bought and paid for at Calvary, not with money. That's ridiculous, absurd. We don't buy miracles like these phony, gutless, useless TV preachers tell you. You got to sow here to get that. And you sow X amount, you get that amount. You sow and then you get a hundredfold. That's all, that's all what they call horse crap at the stable. They use a different term, but it's still, it's just a horse grunting it out. That's all that is. That's all crap. Real money in life is not dollar bills. It's gratefulness here in you being expressed. He said, well, God knows I'm graceful. I'm good. No, you're not good. He likes to hear it. Okay. You like certain music, right? Because you like to hear it. Correct? You know, is music to God's ears? Not the guys on the worship team. They come and sing for the Lord. Oh, then they go live a sinful life. You know, I don't, don't get me started on, I don't want to get myself started on worship teams. Most things are absolutely horrible. God really likes That's what he likes. Music to his ears. He likes people who are thankful and grateful. Those people he can trust. Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Where are you? I love you. See you next week. Okay. <laughs>